Right then, um, good afternoon. I don't know what time it is there, but um, welcome back. Got a new kind of thing to do, which may steer this channel in a completely off-kilter direction, just purely because it's going to take so damn long. Can you guess what I'm in? 10 out of 10, if you can. No, okay, so it's a Morris Minor. It's from 1966. It's 56 years old. And a couple of, well, a couple of weeks ago, it was running absolutely fine. So I picked it up from Leicester and it drove back to Birmingham with no issues at all, really. Uh, but since then, we've had the big freeze and all that. It has sat in the garage for a little while. And now it's a non-starter. And I have done um, a couple of things lately, which I have caught on film, but also haven't. So I'm just going to start again now. Uh, but basically, we have power. Not sure if we've got spark yet. Um, that's today's job, but we have got a fully charged battery and a jumper set. Um, we've got fresh petrol going on. Today, I'm going to be listening out to see if the uh, petrol pump's working. And if it's not, then... Fuel pump, sorry. Uh, then we'll have a look at the fuses, which are all the kind of old glass-style 35 amp ones. So I've got a big bag of them. I've got a... A load of wet what wet wipes. I've got a load of dry wipes to wipe down any things that may have got, but definitely got damp whilst in here. So um, yeah, we're gonna have a look at that. So as far as I'm aware, the distro cap can accumulate some uh, condensation and dampness, and that can stop the spark uh, successfully firing everything up. So we're gonna clean that out first, then whack the battery back on, and then listen out for this bloody fuel pump, eh? So until then. I mean, I will give you a proper walk around the car too, but for today, that is the plan. That's all I've got down my sleeve. Probably got an hour of daylight left anyway, so no time to waste. Uh, thanks for joining me. And yeah, let's get this bloody thing running. Nice. So here she is, working name, Joan. Uh, but I like the name Winston. Blue Winston, Winston cigarettes, about right. So we'll see. Um, but there you go, it's, a, it's an A-series engine. It's the 1097 cc one, so not quite the 1100, a bit later on than that, but they still called it that anyway. And yeah, here we are. Um, I was, I mean, I've, I've been and bought a battery charger and all this other stuff today, but that looks fairly new. Is there a year on it that I can see? No. I'll have a look, I'll have a proper look in a minute. But yeah, that doesn't look too old at all, and it's actually four classics, so someone's thought about it properly. Some work has been done here. Um, yeah, we've checked the oil levels, just about to top that up. Dipstick just here. For future reference, if you want to play along, already checked the radiator, it was fairly low. And now it's not, oh my God. So now it's like right just underneath like the lip there. Top that up with ready to use coolant. Probably should drain it all and start again, but the weather does not allow for that currently. So I'm just topping up for now. And it was running really nice when I first bought it. I don't know if I've got any footage, but if I do, I'll let you know, because I drove it all the way back from Leicester to Birmingham. And um, it got me and my dad back in one piece. Brakes weren't great, but uh, what a car, man, what an experience. And um, yeah, he's, uh, he's Hugo, still around. So yeah, just doing a little bit of maintenance today and see if we can at least get it fired up and then uh, worry about it properly next week. Look at that self. Bonnets and hold themselves up. We don't get treated to that often, even now. So there you go, 1966, crazy reg. Morris Minor Fowls and two door coupe. Here's what we're working with. Uh, yeah, like I said, 1966, two door coupe. Um, fairly good nick for what I paid for it, to be honest. Uh, haven't seen properly, properly underneath, but in the photos all look great. Um, everything else in the, I mean, the bulkhead even looks lovely. Everything down there looks lovely. The amount of space to work on this is refreshing. And uh, yeah, plenty to uh, to do, but also not a lot to see. So things have moved, but it looks severe. Anyway, windscreen wipers, kind of proper mechanical version of that. This looks like, yeah, definitely fuel pump. So that will be, should be sending fuel into this pot, which hopefully we'll be able to see. Nothing's leaking, but I'm not hearing any noises. Aha. What's this? A bad ground. I think we may have found our problem, guys. <laughs> had no bloody fuel coming in. So, I mean, that's even snapped. So yeah, um, it would appear that the fuel pump hasn't got a ground. 
So we'll find out where that goes. And uh, that should be job done, to be honest, because, yeah, I don't hear the clicking. So where has the fuel been coming on? When did that break? Because it was running absolutely fine. Um, other things I had to tighten up and saw. I mean, there was... Um, this was getting hot upon starting, so I've put a new ground in, which is uh, just this one. Kept the old one too, because I like it. It doesn't seem to be causing many more problems. There is a dink in the uh, in the posi lead here, which I'm gonna have to look at and change. But like I said, it was running absolutely fine a few weeks ago, so I'm gonna go from that. It's generally good to run. Fuses neither are broken, so that's good news. This is completely redundant now. This is from when it used to have a, a dynamo. Um, wipers work fine, so I'm not going to touch that. Battery's fully charged. Going to throw that back in in a moment. Air intake for the cab is where it needs to be, I guess. And yeah, from there, I mean, they have put a brake servo on this, which um, is beyond me how that works. But I'm going to start getting my head around that because that's changed. The old master cylinder's underneath the driving uh, floor panel. So I take it that's redundant now. But yeah, there's a look around. Car number D. When were ordering replacement quote. Oh, cool, man. C engine. <laughs> engine number C engine. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, that's it. Well, we've got the carb dash pot's been topped up as well. Oh, no, it hasn't. I looked in it yesterday, but I haven't topped it up yet because I don't know what it's topped up with already. So that's something I've got to look into before I do that. Is it normal engine oil? Of, a lot of people go for three and one. So I'm going to have to just try and taste it, find out uh, what, what's in there currently. And besides that, everything's generally cool. All the electrics work. Brakes need looking at. Um, and yeah, just a nice tidy. And then definitely a look underneath. The passenger, doors, the passenger door is a bit saggy and was closing until I took... The family out for a day. I don't know if someone leaned on it or if the, the whole car's bent now, but door don't close properly. So we'll get around to that. And then, yeah, just a general clean up. And then hopefully, and some new tyres. These aren't in bad nick, but they are old, like 2014. So, and I don't know a lot of the story behind this, to be honest. So we're going to be learning as we go. And I hope I'm not talking too fast because I've watched a few car videos now and everyone seems to slow it down and be more precise with their words but my mind's be racing so sorry about the rush but yeah let's go and clean off the distro cap i'll try and uh, catch it on film for you but we'll go from there so as you can see the uh, the distro is actually looking completely fine and almost new inside completely new and dry so it's not that i'm going to carry on worrying about so we'll pop that back on it was there really nice and it's a pisser with two clips why isn't everything like that so yeah we're going to go right back to this culprit which just looks like the ground has gone astray maybe it was there and now it's snapped but i reckon uh, yeah we weren't getting any fuel through there's no holes in this and nothing it doesn't stink of petrol it doesn't look like a, any major leaks going on everything just looks moist because this garage is moist which is unfortunate but yeah apart from that everything looking nice and greasy so i'm going to reconnect this to a ground and go from there a little bit gutted i missed the fire up it worked <laughs> i got a squealy belt but besides that all good Sweet, mate. We are running and we visited the cemetery. We have two minutes left to close. So now it's time to bugger off, but uh, couple of squeals from the cam, not from the cam belt, just from the alternator belt, but that's fine. Drives are lovely, brakes are slightly nicer, so just get it home, tighten up the handbrake and uh, boom, 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 boom. Right, so uh, we're in uh, Witten Cemetery. If you go back in the channel, it's slightly less car -y. 
but I've been here before a few times for talks and matters and uh, general mind thoughts. But yeah, besides the squealy belt, which can be changed tomorrow, uh, everything's 10 out of 10, absolutely fine. Uh, handbrake still needs just tightening up, which was to be done before it went dead before, to be honest. So um, yeah, absolutely sense, mate. I need to, I mean I've obviously bodged that ground for the fuel at the moment. Oh, we've been locked in. We're all right. Say sorry to this guy, shouldn't have been here really. Can you get him now? Thank you very much, cheers. Get the grieving quick. <laughs> Cheers. So there we go. We're in cemetery. Now you can see the fucking length for the for anything. Oh, anyway, this isn't about Witten Cemetery. This is about the Morris Minor, which uh, that needs. I need to really get some air and I need to just dry this whole thing up. My garage is the least waterproof thing in the world apparently. So very, very damp in here. It won't be helping things. But um, yeah, look how simple it is and it just bloody works. And I've got a lot of things to say about the madness surrounding classic car. Um, yeah, just being a classic car. Tax wise, legality wise, just everything. Everything's dirt cheap to run to fix, to do, and um, it's clean air exempt, which is pretty good for a guy who works a lot in the city centre, so that's why I got this. But um, there's a bit more to say regarding, uh, yeah, more into that of why I did this, but how much it costs to be honest, because it, it hasn't been an expensive uh, gamble. I mean, obviously I could have done without it, but what a lovely car, man. Right, so, handbrake. Middle of the car as per usual, unless it's a bloody French. Um, yeah, two things. So it's had a pretty lacklustre handbrake. So tighten these bad boys up. Very much like doing your um, like your brakes or just anything on, a, on the back end of an old motorbike with drum brakes. All of these things that we've all seen before, turn these at the same time. These go to the wheels, which lock them up. So hopefully that's not too tight. It looks good. So we'll go from there and see if that's working. All the, there's a little bit of damp under here, but nothing crazy. I'm not sure where the water's coming from, but we will find out because nothing else is too wet apart from this area. Even down there is kind of okay. So we'll look down there-ish. There's the cool bit of carpet that covers all that back up. So I'm going to do that now. Thank you. All right then, so we'll chalk that up as a fairly successful first motor car video when I'm almost pretending that I know what I'm doing. It's been a few years of like fixing motorbikes from when I was kind of like 18, 19. So I've had that camper for a while now and I've had to vlog around that. Had a few KAs before that and worked on those quite a lot because the electrics are shite on them. But everything else was brilliant and learned quite a bit mechanical wise. So yeah. I think that was the problem with the little ground cable not attached to anything from the fuel pump. Took the car out for a little longer yesterday. Um, finally posted the DVLA paperwork or whatever, the V5. So that's done. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully some uh, classic car shows and stuff like that are going to be coming up in the next year once we get this crappy weather out of the way. Straight away, we'll just go to any. There's so many car shows and meetups around the Midlands and heading towards Worcester and a little, not too far away from the Midlands, essentially. That'll definitely be hitting some up. Because the car's actually really good on fuel as well. So, the next video, there's a little segue, will all be about how much the car costs to run, to buy, to insure, tax, blah, blah, blah other various charges that the world keep throwing at us, like the clean air zone. My, that's my gripe, fuck the clean air zone, man. It's completely backwards and uh, buying this car 
has almost proven the point. So I'm going to talk you through all that. I'm just a guy who's trying to dodge all this extra bullshit that we've been dealt by our local councils after they happened to throw in some really fancy infrastructure whilst we were all doing bugger all for two years. So we're going to run through all that. It's very annoying. Uh, of course, we'll be uh, coming back to some history videos. I've got a drone now. So I'm going to get some aerial footage of all the bits that I've tried to talk about. So this whole spaghetti area and beyond. I mean, it's not, it's not just a drone for that. But I do want to uh, get some proper footage. It's not just Google Earth. Because things might have even changed and I wouldn't know. So yeah, man. There will be the update. Um, thanks for joining me. It's, uh, it's a wet morning, but just say hello to Pippin. Hello. And basically we've got till 2030 before everything's ruined for us. So let's try and enjoy this last seven years, guys. Yeah.